Welcome to our second GIS tutorial. Uh, today what we're going to be working on is really building upon the the first lesson that we had in GIS which was really about you know introducing to the software, uh, adding some data, um, creating a base map. But GIS is about uh, significantly more than just creating you know visualizing uh, information and creating maps. GIS is actually an analysis tool and, and so what I want to start to do today is introduce you to three primary tools. One of those tools is the select feature. It allows us to select data um, and create a new layer from that selection. The other tool that I'm going to be introducing you to is the buffer. And so once we have an object, a polygon or a point, um, we can actually create a, a known distance, you know, a separation from that, you know, so everything within its sphere of influence. And so if we want to find as in, is the case in this assignment. If we want to find everything within 20 miles of a specific state park, we can create a very simple buffer using the buffer tool. And then the last tool that I'll be showing you is Clip, and Clip helps us actually start to remove information, right? And so we start with the entire state of Indiana, but often we're only interested in doing an analysis on a very small part of that. And that could be a site, it could be a county, it could be um, it could be a buffer of a state park, and so we're going to work through that here today. So to get started, I just want to remind you that um, this is really building off exactly where we left off at the end of the first GIS assignment. And so what you should have in front of you is a map of the state of Indiana. It should contain the six basic layers that we worked with last time. You've already symbolized these, right? Here's the 11 by 17 with the north arrow and the scale bar that you then exported out individually to Photoshop to work on. So ideally, you have access to this and you're ready to go. But if you don't, remember, you can always go to Add Data. You can go back. You can find the folder uh, from Skill Development, you know, from the first GIS assignment. You can go in and you can grab all of these. If you hold the Shift key down, you can select them all at once and just hit Add. Once those are in, you can go in and you can change the symbols. You can... Um, Right, as long as you're here on this list by drawing order tab, you can move the symbols up and down. So if I want the populated places to come up to the top, so you can see Indianapolis jumps to the top of the list. Um, it obscures data behind it, but you can certainly do that. Right. So if you've just opened it up, the first thing I'd suggest doing before we get going any further is I want you to go ahead and go back into data view. And so you see my the cursor down here at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to scroll back over to data view. What data view is, is this is the workspace, right? Layout view we're going to go to later when we're ready to finish up the map. And much like I've advised in person during our last lesson, the first thing I generally do is I go ahead and turn off most of my layers. And the reason for that is, is right now I'm not working with all of them. I don't need them all on, right? They're just, they're adding uh, it's the confusion around it. And I can go ahead and zoom out by clicking the world button and it will zoom out to all of the data. I can see the state of Indiana now. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to introduce you to the select tool. And the select tool you're going to find in a bunch of different places. GIS provides different pathways that are better for different applications. And so um, one way you can use the select tool is you can go to analysis tools. Uh, we can go to extract. We can come in here and we can go to select. Right, and we can double click on that. It'll open up a menu. Uh, the menu looks like this. Um, I could go in and create an expression and go grab things. That's certainly one way to go. Uh, but it's a more complicated route than what we need to work on today. There is another option here. So let's go ahead and select all of the state parks. And so if I turn on my DNR managed uh, lands, the 20 acre minimum properties, and then I zoom in real quick, you're going to see lots and lots of different properties. But if I go ahead and double click on this, and I go into my symbology, and I go into categories, and I think unit name is the one that I want. Oops, no, that's not it. That's every, that's the name of everyone. I think I want the manager. I want the one that's going to pop up looking through Program, program manager possibly. That's the one I'm looking for. Right, and so what you're going to see here is the data behind this will actually break it down based on which agency owns this. And I can change that up and then I can go pick a better color palette um, for parks. You know, maybe something that actually is going to separate these out. And then I can hit apply 
and then go look and you can see the ownership of these all over the state right is very very different if i'm only interested in just the state parks right i can go to selection select by attributes what i'm going to do is i'm going to drop down here to my dnr manage properties and again that program manager i'm going to say program manager equals get unique values and I'm going to come down here and double click on DNR State Parks and hit OK. What you're going to see here is, is that I can now come in and look and you know the selection is now selected at all of the state parks all over the state of Indiana I highlighted them in blue. I can now right click on this layer and go to selection and I can create a layer from those selected features and you're going to see that when I turn off that layer that what's left here are just the state parks right and that can be really useful because you can go into any of the possible columns of information and you can use a selection by attributes to go ahead and pull these up now one thing to note is this selection layer and it's always labeled with a selection at the end is actually what's called a temporary layer meaning that it will disappear as soon as I'm done um, with this ArcGIS session if I ever want to keep it what I have to do is I have to go to data and I have to go to export data and then what I'm going to do I'm already in, in a folder here I'm going to go ahead and just create a, a data folder for this uh, skill development number four you always want to come in here and you want to select shapefile shapefile is kind of the universal file that goes with this and I'm going to label this Indiana Department of Natural Resources State Parks and then I'm going to hit OK and it's going to bring them in and ask if it want to add to the map and I do and then I always want to go remove my selection layer right so right now you can see I can go ahead and drop back and minimize that and right now I have all the large state parks in Indiana represented in this layer now what say let's say that I just want to select one of those right I could go through that whole process of, of creating a, a selection by attributes I could go in and say unit name you know unit name equals and then I could scroll through them and select that way or I can go in and I can just open up the attribute table let me pull that all back down on the the projection screen here so you can actually take a look at this right and I come in here and I can go oh right here unit name here's all of the the possible um, state parks that I might want to look at so one that I'm going to go ahead and grab right now is I just want to go ahead and select shades and so I want each one of you in the assignment I'm going to ask you to select one of these state parks and basically what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and I'm going to sort these so that they're all in alphabetical order I come down to shades if I go ahead and click on this little arrow over here on the left and then I drop back to my map you're gonna see my selection has actually come up At that point I can go ahead and close the attribute table and go selection create a layer from selected features again I'm gonna go ahead and export that out put it back in that data folder as a shape file and so I'm in that I'm gonna say IDNR shades state park and I'm going to hit save and away we go certainly I'm going to add that back to the map again get rid of my selection layer and now if I turn everything else off you're going to and zoom in you're going to see I have the boundary for shade state park At this point I'm going to go ahead and stop this video um, and we'll pick up again with the next one